break was here over the 50 day moving average. The, you know, this is where it started the trade, not up here. So any pull of the market, these are the stocks that are gonna get in first. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So, you know, same business as usual, right? You could pretty much take uh, the last three, four, five nights videos and it's kind of the same thing. We're just melting up here. Uh, we're kind of in the home stretch of what they call, quote unquote, the dog uh, days of summer, right? 100 degrees outside in the Northeast. Uh, everything is all good in the world. The market is, is, is melting up. And again, is everything moving up? No, it's not. Okay. I, I think uh, there's obvious pockets of profit taking, um, non lack of participation, right? But most important, the breadth of the market is very, very strong. And every single time they try to kind of pull uh, bids in this tape, you know, you got a whole round of dip buyers coming in because again, there is no selling pressure. There is no uh, materialistic news that's going to shatter the markets. So if you guys remember last week, there we had that news, right? We talked about uh, we talked about uh, the Taliban taking over pretty much on the weekend uh, Afghanistan, and that kind of shook the markets. And once you know, we had a little bit more clarity of what's going on in the position of the White House. This kind of was just like brushed underneath the rug. And the market continued higher. Now, again, are we getting a little long in the tooth, right? Yeah, probably. I mean, probably. You can see the last couple of days, the channels have been tighter on the queues. Uh, that means the market is a little bit tired. So is it possible at any day they could just yank the market just because gravity is real? Sure, of course. You, again, you can't be naive uh, to think that you're going to be okay no matter what you're buying. It doesn't make a difference how many days in a row uh, the stock is up. Those are, you know, those are the ones who... Uh, who get pulled first. So again, we, we want to avoid those. We, we started talking about that a couple of days ago. Uh, names like, you know, names like a Zoom or a name, excuse me, not a Zoom, like, a, like in the video, even though in the video we kind of rebounded again today. Uh, but, but stocks that have really, really big runs, you kind of want to avoid and just look at stocks that are coming back from the bottom channels. Like for example, last night, uh, we talked about Penn, right? We talked about Penn National Gaming, a game, uh, a stock that nobody was watching. Again, the whole point is, it, you know, you're trying to get involved with names. And we covered this last night. And we constantly try to remind traders that you want to get into names that nobody is looking at until it hits scanners 5% higher, right? That, that's the whole point. And when you look at bottom channels, and middle channels, you're probably going to get the biggest bang for your buck. So we talked about uh, Penn National Gaming last night. We talked about how it got rejected five times into the 50-day moving average. Again, the 50 is an incredibly important, uh, incredibly important area that stocks need to reclaim. And this thing just went absolutely nuts. The same way, uh, how important that 50-day is. The same way that DDD, we were watching it last night also for today's session. And it stopped for the third day in a row off the 50-day moving average. So the 50-day is super important. So when you're when you're doing your chart work, uh, especially in the last couple of weeks from now, again September 6th is Labor Day weekend, you're you're going to find a lot of names that are stretched, that are very very tired. And those names you kind of want to avoid, right? There's also you're going to see a lot of days just because if you look at the cues, you're going to see a lot more. I would say a lot, but you're going to see many more days than normal that the market, it feels like the market's dead and the market's not doing anything, right? Just because you could see the range of the last two candles in the QQQs, because you could just see that uh, with your own eyes. So you can't really have one of these expectations every single day that you have this rock star day in your mind that everything is going to expand. Even a name like Tesla, right? And Tesla has been uh, very, very strong, right? Very strong. But look at the last couple of days of ranges, right? Look how tight these two candles are compared to the to the expansion channels that were a couple of, you know, for, for, for last week. So this is normal, right? This is absolutely normal. And the easiest way to get into trouble is looking at names that had those big runs. So we, we definitely want to avoid those. And as much as uh, as much as everybody loves these big names and they, they, they want to uh, believe in their minds, they're still going to continue to go higher and higher and higher. And maybe they will, right? But the point of reason, right, from the rational point of view is understand when you have this big linear move 
and the market is starting to put these digestion candles in, it doesn't take many, it doesn't take many reasons for the market to, to kind of yank and still be good, right? And still be absolutely good because the market has had such a big run. Again, gravity is real. It could strike at any single time. And the most important thing is you could be ready. How you combat gravity, again, is to avoid the overextended names and focus on your research from the night before on names like, you know, like a name like a pen, right? From, from yesterday, a name like a DDD, even though uh, it didn't trigger, right? But a name like DDD that's just coming out of a channel. Maybe it reclaims tomorrow and maybe it goes, but that's what you want, something tight. So if they do pull the market, right, and you're ready for the pull, the first stocks are gonna come for the stocks with the high flyers. So names like UPST had really, really big moves, but the, but the break was here over the 50 day moving average. The, you know, this is where it started the trade, not up here. So any pull of the market, these are the stocks gonna get it, get it hit first. So avoid the high flyers for now until people come back from vacation and the market stabilizes and you kind of get a true nature of what should happen in the fourth quarter. But the key is stick to the tighter channels. And even a name like MRNA that we talked about last night in the video, I know it's a big range trade, right? And there's a big average to range, but you can see how tight this channel is. So I would rather be wrong on Moderna right coming out of this channel here than buying moderna somewhere up here and having a you know having a 70 point yank just literally out of nowhere so these are the names we're definitely watching uh tight channels uh condensing channels either reclaiming the five the 10 the 50 day moving average something that if there is a back test an aggressive rug pull these won't be the first stocks that are going to be uh, in the line of fire. And that's kind of the most important thing. So today wasn't one of those gung-ho days where there's some value to sure, right? We talked about last night, uh, RBLX that had a really, really strong move. Again, anything strong, guys, and this is, this is one of my kind of pet peeves, anything strong the day before, if they open up lower into the rising 60 minute support, it's the highest probability you're gonna get a bounce, right? And you know, we talked about it. We got the week open this morning. They trapped at 88. Matter of fact, this was actually the first thing uh, that we talked about, right? Uh, so this was the pivot yesterday, 85, 80, 86 needs to build. Uh, 8750 macro, blah, 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 you know, went to 90. Okay. So this morning, that was the notes. Huge move yesterday for experienced traders, potential dip buy off this rising 60 minute support at 88. The low of the day was 87.60s. We got long at 88. Nice pop. This thing went green, right? It went green. It went to 91. And this is going to be where the value. Look for also strong names that had a really big move. If they open up lower into rising 60 minute support, that is where you want to be. That's the highest probability that eager shorts will get trapped. And there's the highest probability that the range is defended. They're going to try to squeeze it to at least red to green at least once. Uh, DDOG, I still like. I'm still watching this thing. This is a nice looking pattern. Uh, this is just going through distribution right now, right? The longer this thing sits in distribution, the higher probability this thing's gonna wake up and this thing is just getting tighter and tighter and tighter. All this thing needs to do is just wake up, right? Just wake up, confirm this channel and you got 44 uh, measured potential. So we're still kind of waiting on that. Netflix obviously never got anywhere close to uh, 558 dash, went to 190, just, just pretty much volumes right up, no there. This was definitely the big move of the day. Uh, pen, right? Uh, 75, huge area needs to build. We talked about this last night. Uh, again, bottom channels coming out. That is where your value is. Had this monster move. 75 uh, went to uh, $80. And again, same notes as with RBLX from yesterday, right? From this morning. Tomorrow, if pen gives you a dip open, right? Into rising 60 minute support. Again, just go to, go to your, whatever your charting platform is. Go on the 60 minute chart, right? If you see these lines converging on rising support, that's the supply, right? That's the demand zone. That's where uh, eager, uh, uneducated shorts, unfortunately, get trapped. And so if we could get a down open tomorrow and they trap the shorts in, into anywhere, right? Into this whole green line or this line here, wherever it gaps down to, you can get a really high defined trade back. And if it goes red to green, who's better than you? So again, we're definitely watching uh, Penn again for a day two move. Uh, tomorrow, uh, beyond, I, I liked it going into today. Unfortunately, uh, they got downgraded, came nowhere close to the 125. Uh, DDD, again, got rejected right into 
uh, the 50 day moving average. This is three times now, once, twice, three times a lady. Eventually this thing confirms the 50 day and this thing's gonna explode. Might not, ha might not happen tomorrow, might not happen ever. But the point is we're, we're at least set an alert off this 50 day moving average. So when it does pop off, you are uh, prepared. Uh, ZM, just in case it decides to join the living Man, this thing is the worst. It just, it never, it just doesn't, doesn't want to do anything. It just absolutely doesn't do anything. I watch it every day. I look for it. I say, maybe today's the day it wakes up and never wakes up. It's just dead money right now. Uh, Delta is not getting it up. Uh, American Airlines is not getting up. All the other strains are just not getting this damn thing up. I don't know. Dead money for now. Uh, Tesla, you know, not bad. 7-Eleven uh, needs to build. So we, we took that at 7-Eleven. It rallied, right? It rallied 7-15. Guys, if you ever want a lesson of watching order flow or tape reading, as some people call it, watch Tesla, right? Watch Tesla. So Tesla goes from 7-Eleven, 7 7-15. That was also the previous day's high. There was, when I'm telling you, it felt like the guy was selling the float there. It really did. And how do you know there's a, there's a reload seller in the crowd? When they're buying hundreds of thousands of shares in that area, and the guy does not want to move. And eventually, you know, sellers just, you know, buyers just give up, right? The buyers give up. But the Tesla's credit, it has been putting in higher lows now for the last three, four days. So it's, I think if they could clean this dude up, and again, nobody knows how much stock this guy has for sale. I, it, to my guess, I would think he sold a million shares today, right? In that 715s area, they just would not let go of the stock. I don't know what it is, if it's a fund selling it, if it's, uh, you know, uh, if it's a liquidation, or is this a natural short? I don't know. We can't speculate. But the one thing that we do know is you can't, there, there is no game plan for, for uh, a motivated uh, reload seller. The guy could have 50,000, the guy could have 5 million for sale. We don't know. So hopefully uh, they clean him up in the next couple of days because we did see massive call buying coming in. Short term, we saw 720s, 730s, 740s. Get this guy out of the way, right? As the ludicrous song says, move, get out the right? Get out the way. So let's see what happens here in the next couple of days. Uh, Splunk, nice move ahead of earnings, uh, 153.75, 154. Uh, for experienced traders, again, it's not the thickest stock in the world. It reports after hours. Here is Splunk. So right here is SPLK, SPLK, right? So it took out this 53.75, uh, 54, went to uh, 57. Really, really nice move. Uh, really, really nice move um, into the close. and looks like the earnings were pretty good as well. So good job there for you guys caught Splunk. Uh, AMD, I still like, didn't come, for, didn't come close to the 110, but I still like that 110 level. Uh, Tesla, again, it's just, it's just a massive seller, right? I said that first move at 7-Eleven, take on the way up. There's a massive seller there at 7-15. They just could not get rid of this guy. Uh, talk about how specific technical analysis is, right? MRNA 414 supply needs to build. Look at today's highs on MRNA, right? 414 needs to build. Today's high was 1380. So again, technical analysis is not a subjective form of conversation. It's pretty damn real. So this whole channel here, I'm still watching uh, for the next couple of days. Uh, Penn again, take on the way up. Big, big move uh, in Penn Gaming. Splunk, take on the way up. Uh, 156 on deck, again, went to 157. Uh, again, perfect bounce, absolute perfect bounce on RBLX. We caught this off the 88 level. Uh, really nice bounce, went, went green. Um, I, I, I wasn't in it already until by the time it got green, but nevertheless, really nice move. Went to actually a dollar above uh, yesterday's high, so really nice move there. Coin, not, not a big move at all. 261 needs to build, uh, only spiked up about a buck. Uh, and again, you know, his pen just went absolutely nuts. 78 is his first supply, and then went uh, all the way to 80. So look, I, I think tomorrow there's definitely good value, but just keep in mind in the back of your head, again, we have been going linear. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 channel has been shrinking for the last couple of days. That's not a good sign, right? That's usually a sign that the market is tired. Now, again, does it mean you can't buy stocks tomorrow? No, of course not. There's plenty of strength. And if you do your homework tonight, you'll see plenty of good value for tomorrow's session. But please stay away from anything overextended because, again, if they pull, and again, gravity is real. It might not come tomorrow. But gravity is real. The last thing you want to do is be in a name that has been bought up for four or five days in a row, sitting there, you know, with no safety net. Guys, God bless. Stay safe. And with God's will, I'll see you tomorrow soon.